Oh yeah. Uh, hope everybody's well. This is the uh, second video for Nifty Fifty running. Um, I believe me, my brother's already posted one today. Uh, this is just a bit of a starter. Uh, did the introductions yesterday. Um, I'd just like to say thank you for everybody so far that's subscribed. Um, hopefully, you will get something out of this. Um, thanks to uh, the guys who's commented. Uh, not John Smith. Cheers. Uh, Razai Ali, who um, I know he's been following me for a while and he's always putting positive comments uh, on for myself and my brother. And I think he's uh, he's been out there and he's seen me run and I think it was the Pontefract Half Marathon where I uh, had quite a good result and uh, pretty much left the rest of the field coming in first. Um, I'm going to break down my videos. I'm going to give a brief welcome. Uh, thank everybody uh, for the comments. Uh, then I'm going to give a, a training update, where I am at the moment, um, what I'm looking to achieve. And then I'll cover a topic. Uh, my topic today is going to be overtraining, how I've become where I am today with the injury. And uh, I'll finish off with any questions from your comments. I'll uh, I'll try and answer them. If I don't go into too much detail with the uh, the comments, because I will cover them at some point uh, in a later video. So I'll just give a, a brief outline to what I think, and then uh, in later videos I'll go into a lot more detail. So first of all, then uh, my training so far okay how did i end up where i am okay with this stress fracture uh basically it happened i'd say probably about six weeks ago um i was doing high mileage i changed my training uh i used to do quite a lot of uh low intensity long so I'd, you know i'd cover 100 120 miles but a lot of that would be done at a real easy pace um I know a lot of you know me because I've been doing the, the Maffetone method and I, I use low heart rate training. Um, with a lot of the training before, I was uh, well below my Maffetone heart rate. So it was nice, easy, relaxed uh, pace and I, I could manage it quite well and I could do quite high mileage and uh, I benefited quite a lot from it and uh, it got me good results as well. So... It's actually quite a, a good thing. Um, to improve, I then added a little bit of speed. So previously, I just added, you know, one, mainly one main interval session, uh, which was on a Wednesday down at the track with my brother, and then uh, a long run, which is normally on a Saturday or a Sunday. So they were my main sessions. I'd say my speed work, it's probably, <coughs> excuse me, about 90% aerobic easy stuff and about 10% of the speed work. So anywhere around the sort of 80-20, what a lot of people are aware of, you're not going too far wrong. Um, my speed work was quite intense and my mileage was very high. So I'm still got doing plenty of mileage at a high, um, you know, sort of tempo with the speed work, you know, that, even if it's like 10 miles a week, it's it's still quite a lot and it's still quite taxing on the body. But um, when I was doing that, I was fine. And then I changed my training. You know, I got a, a test and everything for lactate threshold. And uh, that told me that I should be training a little bit harder. So I thought I'd give it a go. Um, I built up gradually. Again, building up to 100, 120 miles. Uh, what I found as I went on, even though I was getting quite fit, I was feeling quite good. I was feeling really strong, my legs. But it was just too much for my body. And uh, what happens is, uh, you know, if, you, if your body, body's not recovering properly, um, eventually it's, it's going to wear out and something's going to happen. And that's what happened to myself. You know, different things need different levels of recovery. So you, your muscles, they can recover relatively quickly. Your tendons, 
it might take a, a different time period, maybe a bit longer. Uh, and things like your bones, that's going to take a lot longer. Okay, it's going to take a lot longer for them to break down and repair themselves. Yeah, if you work on your muscles, um, you know, normally a, a day or so, so a rest, and it starts to ease off, sort itself out. Okay, depending on how hard and how far you've been running. Um, but it was just, it was just too much for me. Yeah, I've been going too hard for too long, and uh, eventually, well, my my bone has broken down. It's the uh, fibula, which runs uh, just outside of the uh, the ankle, and it's right down near the bottom of uh, the the ankle itself. Uh, what I found is a gradual pain. Uh, I didn't think too much of it. I thought it might be muscular. I'll just uh, run it off like you do. Uh, I didn't go too hard on it, you know, I'd have a couple of easy days and then uh, try a harder session. After the harder sessions, it, I could feel the pain and it, in the morning, the next morning, it was even worse and uh, I decided just just to stop and then uh, get it seen to. So I went and had an x-ray and uh, it turned out to be a, a stress fracture. So it was a uh, probably a, a gradual build up of it over over a number of weeks, um, but if it had continued, you know, potentially it could have resulted in a in a full break and I'd have been out for absolutely months. So I think I took the right decision, um, and I went for a run yesterday on the treadmill. It felt fine, okay. On a treadmill, it's quite low impact. Um, I tried to run a couple of weeks ago on the grass. But it was just too much, too early for it. So I, I, I stopped and went back to walking. Yeah, so that's where I am with the uh, the injury. So listen to your body. Uh, any signs of an injury, and just just stop running. I found with my injury, because it's uh, the, the fibula, walking is fine, absolutely fine. Don't cause any pain whatsoever. Okay. Um, when it first happened, it was quite painful. Uh, but I gradually built up the walking and then the pain is actually easing off. It's eased off each day. When I put my finger on it and I press on it, I could still feel it. So I'm getting to the point now where I can press on it and I, I can feel the, the tiniest little bit of pain, which tells me that it's it's nearly there. But I'm not going to go mad on it running every day until that pain is completely gone. Okay, that's why I'm doing a lot of walking. So what I'm doing at the moment is uh, I do a day, say day one, 45 minute walk, day two, 45 minute walk, and then uh, day three, when I get back to full training, this would be my interval day. So I'm, I'm building up the uh, the endurance for this. So today I think I did about two hours, 15 minutes walking, and it, it's quite a, a speed walk. And uh, I go on a, a hilly road, which is round my local park, so it's quite... You know, it can get my heart rate going, which is, is good. So it's going to give me a little bit of uh, aerobic benefit. So that's where I am with the injury. What else I've found is with the overtraining, um, what I've not really experienced before, uh, well, as I, as I can remember, is uh, quite a few other things happen, okay? Uh, firstly, I seem to get uh, insomnia. So uh, if I have a hard training session and I, and I keep it going the next day and the day after that, I, I really do struggle to get a good night's sleep. Okay, so that was quite a, an issue. Um, you start to lack motivation. And uh, also you start to get a bit depressed. And uh, these are all things that uh, just simply come from running too much uh, over training you know uh, as weird as it sounds you know exercise is supposed to help you with when you you know get depressed and stuff like that but if you do too much it's going to have the opposite effect yeah it's like you know your muscles your tendons your bones all your hormones they're going to be all over the place okay you need uh, rest and that's why I've gone for the, the two days easy and then uh, the one day 
which is really hard. Okay, so that's enough on that. I won't go into too much detail with that. So my training, it's as I've just mentioned, and then I'm going to build up gradually. So I'm going to keep walking for now. So because I've done my long uh, my long walk day today, I'm going to do two easy walk days. I'm going to see how the ankle is, and then uh, my long day, I'm going to add a little bit of running. Okay, so I'll probably run about five minutes and then have a little walk, see how my ankle feels, if it's okay, do another, and then try and go for the full sort of two hours, maybe a little bit more, uh, around the local park. I'm going to try to do the running on the inclines, so, because I've had a stress fracture, you know, all that weight, when you're going downhill, it's going to put a lot of pressure on that small bone, okay, so it's not as much uh, pressure if you're going uphill. So I'll, I'll see how it goes and uh, hopefully, fingers crossed, all will go well and then I'll, I'll start building up from there. And then hopefully build up so I'm back to doing two hours on me, me long day. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, right, what I'll cover now is a few questions. So Dermot Ryan, he sent a few questions in. Um, asking about cross training, um, I think cross training is absolutely brilliant. You know, to give your legs a break from pounding the roads. Um, personally, I myself in my garage, I've got a exercise bike and a, a treadmill, and I use both of them. They're great for aerobic fitness. I find that my heart rate doesn't go up too high, so it's quite good for recovery. Um, and that's both on the treadmill and the um, exercise bike. So anything that's going to give you an aerobic benefit, swimming, uh, rowing, getting a bike and going out on the roads, yeah. So you, you can probably go for miles on the road, <laughs> you know, go for hours on a bike ride and uh, you could it can be quite relaxing depending on how intense you want it, but your heart rate is going to be, you know, 10 to 15 beats lower. As soon as you get out running, you know, it tends to go up a little bit more, especially any hills along the uh, along the way so I think uh, cross training you know once or twice a week not a problem it's great for your aerobic fitness uh, next one uh, as you get older what percentage of your training do you find or think needs to be specific um, I'd say when you're working out your percentages I like to do it by time. Okay, so if I'm doing 10 hours a week, I'll do one hour, which is a bit more specific. Um, and that's working on a, you know, 90%, 10%. So if you're working on the 80-20 rule, which is brilliant, excellent. Um, you know, if you're doing 10 hours, a couple of hours at, say, intervals or... Uh, you know, something a bit more high intensity. High intensity. Uh, you can also do it as part of your, your long run. So you could uh, build up uh, and then the middle bit, run for an hour quite intense and then ease off towards the end or, you know, put the hard effort at the end of the run. So it's a bit more like progressive. But I'd say 80-20 uh, or 90-10 as I've done in the past. Uh, next question was, what training will you do more specifically working on stride frequency? I've never really thought about, um, you know, improving my cadence or anything like that. I've just run naturally. Um, but what I've found that does improve it is running on a treadmill. It's absolutely amazing. Um, it just makes the, uh, the cadence. You know, recently I've done quite a lot on the treadmill. And when I go out, I found that my cadence is a, a lot faster. Um, and generally, when I race, my cadence is, it, it just automatically hits about 180. But um, when I were doing like math sort of training, it's around about 160. So, but I, I wouldn't really worry too much if it's low, you know, especially a, a low heart rate or easy pace. Uh, when you run faster, that's when you, you want to be trying to get up to that uh, 180. But like I said, 
uh, for me it's the uh, treadmill that's made it work and uh, every time I go on a treadmill I go on uh, I use uh, barefoot shoes so uh, I think I've got them in here yep that's what I use a pair of mirrors yep brilliant for on the treadmill nice and light and uh, they're flat yeah. either that or try it without any trainers on and it does feel quite good running barefoot uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. another question from Paul James how did the recent foray into the keto diet go ok I've done keto twice um, each time has been a six month block the, and uh, each time it's uh, I found this, the same sort of results okay um, benefits and uh, it's had a few uh, disadvantages as well uh, I'll go through the disadvantages first when you start off it's really difficult um, my legs felt really sore especially in my quads even doing a sort of like short distances yeah once your body gets dehyd uh, dehydrated um, depleted of your carbohydrates and you're not used to it it's a bit of a shock to the system uh, you'll get what's called a keto flu um, headaches it'll make you feel sick that felt absolutely terrible uh, they say that you should take uh, electrolytes I tried to take uh, an electrolyte sub supplement and that made me feel sick it made me even worse so I found that taking salt with all my meals that worked quite well and I had a little bit of salt in my in my water, and uh, that worked quite well. After a, a few weeks, it, it does ease off, and then the ball starts rolling. And uh, the main benefit is you, your endurance is going to be, you know, you're going to feel really good. You, you can you feel like you can run for for miles. I was doing like thirty mile runs, and it was like I hadn't even been for a run. The downfall was a. Uh, you're going to lose some speed without carbohydrates you know you can't and uh, I tried doing a race so I was on my full keto and I tried adding a, a little bit of carb just before the race but it's like because uh, the body's changed it doesn't really recognise it, it like it used to so it doesn't have the, the same sort of effect one thing I'd, I have found what's quite good for keto what will make you feel a little bit you know, your legs feel a bit heavy at times. Uh, what makes it feel a bit better is uh, a bit of caffeine before. So about an hour before, uh, an hour before, have a, a cup of coffee. Not too much coffee. Uh, you don't want to be going to the loo, which is what happens with a lot of people. They have too much coffee. Uh, yeah, so just a little bit of coffee. Um, just mentioning on the, the coffee situation, Another thing I've done is I restrict my caffeine intake and then I found now uh, just before my training I have a, a coffee an hour before and uh, it's it's like rocket fuel, it's absolutely bonkers. Um, when you deplete yourself a coffee you, you might get a bit of a headache but it wears off, just get, uh, keep yourself hydrated and you should be fine. Um, another thing I'd like to mention is uh, briefly, I like to drink a lot of water and uh, I also like to keep up my iron levels. So what this does is builds up your, your blood volume. Okay, so if you're drinking a lot of water and uh, I eat, I never use 